Now France 24's Yuka Waye is still with us here in the studio. Yuka, as we can see from these live pictures, the ceremony is, of course, still uh, ongoing. What are we seeing right now? Well, we're seeing right now uh, the emperor leaving the throne. He's descended from the throne, which he earlier ascended and proclaimed himself emperor. Um, and then he now slowly walks towards the people. Uh, you can see the long box uh, that is being carried in front of him. That's probably, presumably, the sword, the sacred sword called uh, Kusanagi no Tsurugi. Uh, that is said to have uh, passed down from the from the sun goddess Amaterasu in ancient times, uh, the imperial family's mythical an uh, ancestor, and uh, it's one of the three sacred objects that is set to uh, symbolize the emperor's power. And now the emperor is slowly walking towards the courtyard where foreign dignitaries are gathering to see him. Uh, representatives of some 190 countries and uh, international organizations uh, have been invited. They're attending the ceremony. Uh, not all of them obviously uh, were able to be there at the uh, ceremonial hall, but many of them are in the courtyard waiting for uh, to see the emperor. Now, uh, carried behind him, so before him was the sword, behind him presumably is the gem. And what's missing among the three treasures uh, is the sacred mirror that uh, is supposed to never leave the, the, the shrine at Ise in Mie Prefecture, which is supposed to be one of the most important uh, shrines in Japan. And it's the, uh, the, the home, as it were, ground of, the, um, of Japan's Shinto religion. This is the sword that's being carried or what we believe uh, as the sword um, that nobody, even the emperor, is supposed to have seen in real. Emperor Naruhito, after just proclaiming himself Japan's 126th emperor, just uh, slowly walking. As you can see, no sound and no comments, no, it's the, the whole ceremony has been very serene and very well organized. And, and you could, for those for those people just tuning in to watch this footage, just talk us through some maybe something more about the the, the costumes and, and and the and the symbolism that we're seeing here. There's some very elaborate um, costumes being worn here. It is very elaborate. It's a multi-layered uh, robe called uh, Junihitoe. It literally means twelve-layered kimono. Uh, this is Emperor Masako who's walking down. Uh, it seems, well, she's managing it very well, but I have heard that it's very difficult to move around in those uh, costumes because they're just so heavy. They're made of silk, so each layer uh, is quite light, lightweight and, and, and thin, but still, when you have multi, multiple layers like this, uh, with a long robe trading behind you, it is difficult to move around. Uh, now, it's not only the empress, but all the adult members of the imperial family, as well as staff, are uh, um, wearing traditional uh, medieval attire for this occasion. So this uh, very much looking, it, it does it does not, it's only in the court, in Japanese courts, but at, in, in ancient times that we have, uh, we were used to seeing uh, people dressed like this, obviously uh, less and less, fewer and fewer people even wear kimono. Uh, we, most of the people in the street are wearing um, ordinary Western clothes. So this is an occasion even for uh, the Japanese people to see uh, something that is very rarely seen in public. OK, Yuka, we're just going to pause there and bring uh, our viewers some of the day's other world news here on uh, France 24 as that ceremony continues there in Tokyo. Now, a short one.